we're going to go through some tooling setup for our CNC saws and saw jets. We can add tooling from the tool select button on our Park Industries toolbar. You may need to turn the toolbar on by going to the machine profile select. And then you can choose to select a tool or add a tool to your tool list. I'm going to start with a blank tool list, so I'll have to go and add tools in. There are many different tool types that we can choose from, depending on the machine. The most common is a saw blade, so I'll start there. The blade's tool number is going to vary from machine to machine. As you can see, some machines require a specific blade number, others can use any. I'll press the start button to start building this tool, and as you can see, we can edit the tool number here as well. Let's take a quick look at the settings when building a saw blade. You can use whatever name of a blade that you'd like. For this example, I'm going to build two of the exact same blades used to cut two different materials. So only the feed and speeds will change between the two blades. Actual recommended feeds and speeds for each blade and material is only recommended by its manufacturer. The two different types of feed rates for the saw blade are the cut feed, which the manufacturer can provide, and the down feed when the blade is going down into the material. The down feed is usually set as a percentage of the cut feed, just slow enough to prevent chipping as the blade plunges into the material. A blade manufacturer may also recommend a speed or RPM for their blade. The RPMs can only be changed if your machine has a VFD, which can be an option on saw jets, and is usually included on saws with a mill bit, router bit, or core bit. The next field, rapid plane, is referenced from the top of the material. So the bottom of the blade will be two inches above the top of the material when it rapids across into location. The next field is the final cut depth. This references off the machine's table. So the value of negative 0.125 means that the blade is going to go an eighth inch into the table to cut our part all the way through. When programming some machines, you may see a rapid down to field. This also references to the top of the material. The blade's kerf is the thickness of the cutting segments. The safety distance is a value that is added on to the over-travel of the blade. The over-travel is calculated from the blade's diameter and its total cut depth and the material thickness. This will give an extra one inch boundary to ensure that the blade won't run into another part. So now, with all the physical parameters set, let's take a look at the manufacturer's recommended feeds and speeds. I'm going to call this blade the blue blade, and I'll abbreviate it and set up the feeds and speeds for cutting medium material. They recommend that their blade be run at an RPM between 1700 and 2000. I'm going to pick in the middle of this range and set my RPM at 1850. When I run and test this blade, I'll set my RPM and feed rate override on my machine to 80%, and I can gradually increase or decrease from there. I'll be careful not to run the blade at too low of a feed rate or too high of an RPM to prevent glazing. Next we'll set our cut feed or inches per minute. Here again I'll start at the middle to low side at 120 inches per minute. And to start I'll be setting my down feeds at about 10% of what I set for the cut feed. 
and it'll use the same value in the down feed for the tight cut as well. These feeds and speeds that were provided were for when the blade is cutting straight up and down. When cutting miters, the blade is at an angle. So I'm going to reduce my feed rates to 50% to start with. Because the blade is cutting more material, and when plunging has a greater chance of deflection, which also can lead to the blade walking while it's cutting. I'm going to use the same values in the arc feeds as well. These values will only be used when we choose Blade Continuous Arc. Click on Save and Close to save our blue blade with settings to cut medium material. And now I'm going to choose to add another blade with the same physical properties, but set up with parameters to cut quartzite. I'm going to change the name of the blade, but I'll keep the tool number the same. The only difference being the feeds and speeds for a different type of material. So I'll use the same thought process as before. Choosing the RPMs in inches per minute in about mid-range of what the manufacturer suggested. Another option that you have when cutting hard material is to use step cutting. It's available in both straight and miter applications. Check the box to enable it. The depth per cut, which we have set to a maximum of 0.4 inches, will control how many passes it takes to get through the material. The three values we can use to calculate passes are the depth per cut, the material thickness, and the final cut depth. First calculate the distance to be traveled. Add the material thickness to the final cut depth. Then take that value and divide it by the depth per cut. So when calculated out, it will make more than three passes. So if it takes four passes, to cut the cut thickness of 1.325, and we divided the 1.325 by the four passes, we would get the value of 0.33125. This is the actual and real value that the machine will cut. If you check bidirectional, the machine will cut in each direction, forward and backward. And then when I run and test these RPMs and feed rates, I'll set the overrides to about 70 or 80% and increase from there if needed. Now I can save or save and close to have two different ways to run the same blue blade. If I select the quartzite, I'll see that as the active blade when I go to my auto toolpath. You can also set up amp control or load control on our CNC saws and saw jets. You can find a video of amp control on the Park Industries website. Thank you for choosing Park Industries. Thanks.